Hello everyone. In this presentation, I am going to explain in detail how to choose the exact master cone while doing root canal treatment. As we all know that, however good your cleaning shaping is, but the definitive success of the root canal treatment lasts by how properly you are going to obturate three-dimensionally the root canal system. The cornerstone of the root canal obturation is the ideal master cone selection. Let's see in detail how to select the perfect master cone. Before going into the details, just have a look at these pictures. There are four images, one, two, three, and four. Just make up your mind among one of the following. If a hypothetical question is asked like, if you are to choose one among these four as definitely a bad master cone selection, which one you will choose? Listen to the question again. If you want to choose which one among the images is totally wrong. And if this master cone, if you are doing root canal treatment, it is going to fail. Hopefully, you have made up your mind about choosing one of the master cone as the most invalid or wrong master cone. Let's go continue with the presentation. By the end of the presentation, you will be able to say which one is the most awkward or the blunder in such a master cone selection. By the way, I am Dr. Berin Palayan and I make videos that will be useful for dentist and dental students. There are more details in the description. Kindly go through the description and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Smart Dentistry. The first essential key factor that you have to understand in the selection of the master cone is the extent of the master cone. So the extent is fairly very simple. The extension of the master cone or how far the master cone is extended till the apical end. So we can see in this, there is, this picture just shows the apical third of a tooth where we have done cleaning and shaping. And you can see that I have placed a master cone. Is this master cone a correct? Is the extension of the master cone is correct? You can see that it is up to the tip, but ideally you should know that the master cone or in fact the obturation should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter short of the apical extension. Why it has to be short? Because the minor constriction, which is close to the apical foramen is 0.5 to 1 millimeter shorter than the radiographic apex. So we should always, so this is not correct. So we shall do one thing. We shall reduce the height or the extension by 0.5 to 1 millimeter. Now you can see that, yes, this is correct, right? So now we can say that the extension of the master cone is correct. And just imagine that with this master cone, you are doing an obturation. So the lateral spaces on both sides, we can see here that that there are some lateral spaces on these sides. So what will happen to these lateral spaces? These lateral spaces obviously get filled by the root canal sealer. And in a radiograph, if you are seeing, being the root canal sealer, it's such a radiopaque material, you will feel like that you have done a wonderful root canal obturation. And looking at the radiograph, you may feel very happy. But what happens is most of the root canal sealers in due time, throughout maybe we can say that six months, one year or so, it will start dissolving in the fluids. So maybe after a year or so, this will be the situation. The master cone or the gutta percha will be there and the surrounded sealer will get dissolved and the root canal treatment will fail. So extension is not the only factor that you have to take into consideration while selecting the master cone. So there is another factor which is more important than the extent of the master cone is the fit of the master cone in the root canal. So let's see that in the first uh, example, we have seen that this master cone 
is the extension is right but the fit is not there why on both sides there are some lateral spaces now if you are choosing a master cone which is 0.5 to 1 millimeter short at the same time if it is fitting perfectly without any lateral spaces now we can see that there are no lateral spaces anywhere around the master cone then this is the exact selection of the master cone so there are two factors that we have to take into consideration one is the extension and second is the fit this fit we can say like that the tuning gauging and many many technical terms are there i am not going into any of the details of those technical terms now clinically let's be very simple and frank how are you going to check the extension of the master cone we all know that it is very simple and easy just take a radiograph just look for the radiographic apex just make sure your the master cone lies 0.5 to 1 millimeter especially in case of young patients we can keep it 0.5 millimeter short and for older patients we can keep around 1 millimeter short of the radiographic apex so the extension is now fine and how are you going to check the fit of the master cone so this is very very technique sensitive and very critical because in a radiograph we can see the extension but you can never see the fit of the master cone because a radiograph being a two-dimensional two view of a three-dimensional root canal system we can never see it so how are you going to check the fit of the master cone for that you have to rely upon the tactile sensation and an important feature which is called as the tuck back what is this tuck back when you place a master cone inside at the working length and if you try to pull it it should offer some form of resistance so when you are placing the cone at the working length and while you are trying to remove it it should offer some form of resistance which is called as a tuck back so that is felt that's why we always consider that root canal treatment is not a mechanical work it is a procedure that has to be felt and it has to be performed so the tactile sensation plays a very important role in checking the fit of the master cone so now i will come to a, 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 a image here we can see that there is a situation where we get a false tuck back you can see this master cone just let's keep that we have uh, prepared this root canal up to tip size of 30 and a taper of 6 percentage and if you are uh, pulling for or checking for the tuck back there will be tuck back so this is called as a tuck, false tuck back why because you can see that in the tip there are lot of lateral spaces but in the curvature in this area you can see that the master cone is binding to the root canal so if you are trying to pull it you will get a feel that yes it is fit inside the root canal system and we will check in a radiograph yes it is the extension is also correct the fit is also correct but again it is not the right way why because the tuck back is coming from the cone binding at the curvature or it may be from the coronal part or some part of the canal but not from the tip so this is called as a false tuck back so then what is a true tuck back when there are no lateral spaces in the apical part and still if you are able to get a tuck back then that is a true tuck back then clinically how are you going to verify whether the tuck back that you are getting is false or true the technique is very simple just use a lesser taper cone for example in this example i told the canal preparation is up to the tip size of 30 and a taper of 6 percentage if you are using a 6 percentage tapered cone it might give a false tuck back but if you are using a 30 tip size 2 percentage cone it is going to be a narrow cone so here you can see that there are so much of the spaces around the cone in all these areas you can see that so it is not going to bind in any of these areas but it is going to bind at the tip here you can see at the tip 
it is binding so if you have prepared the kernel up to size 30 whatever the taper is let it be four percentage six percentage or eight eight percentage whatever it may be and if you are using a simple lesser taper two percentage cone you will still get the tuck back for example if you have prepared the kernel to 40 size four percentage taper and still if you are using a two percentage 40 size cone still you will get a tuck back because these cones are quite narrow you will not find or get a false tuck back because these cones are not going to bind in any of those areas so what's the right way of choosing or checking for the tuck back just concentrate on the tip size you just select the canal that you have prepared for example 36 percentage and keep a 36 percentage cut up aperture cone and look for the tuck back let's keep that you are getting a uh, tuck back you do not know whether it is true or false then you take a two percentage 30 size cone put at the same working length and look for the tuck back if you are getting tuck back exactly at the working length with the two percentage 30 size cone also then your master cone selection is correct if not you are getting a false tuck back with the greater taper cone in those situations you may have to choose a alternative cone or the apical size is bigger than what you have already prepared you may have to choose a greater size uh, cone maybe instead of 30 we may have to go to 35 and then you may have to check for tuck back with a 35 size 2 percentage cone also so vice versa so that for true tuck back the greater taper cone and a lesser taper cone both at working length will give tuck back always make sure that you get that tuck back before proceeding with root canal obturation okay so now i will tell some one or two some basic clinical doubts that you always get while choosing a master cone one at least once in your lifetime you would have seen such a clinical appearance uh, in a radiographic appearance so this is called as a wiggled cone why does this wiggled cone appearance up, uh, you you may see in a radiography is because the apical size is bigger than the cone that you have selected so an application of the pressure pushing the cone it will get bent or wiggled like this and the right way to correct this mistake is discard the cone take a new cone or take a choose a bigger size cone or trim the cone maybe one or two millimeter and check for the fit first clinical tip the second clinical tip is this is common among most of the beginner endodontist and maybe anyone who does root canal treatment for the first maybe 500 cases they always get this doubt or the, you may get a doubt whenever you are shifting from one file system to the other file system the files are going up to the working length but whenever i keep the master cone the master cones will 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 be quite short of the working length the master cones are not reaching till the working length so what's the reason the reason for that is you can see here so in this areas you can see that the master cone is binding coronally so the apical extent will be quite short coronally the master cone or the gutta percha is binding in the canal walls and so this coronal portion is not letting the gutta percha to go inside so i will explain with this example so you can see that if you are taking a gutta percha cone from the tip till the extent whatever it goes till the full length of the cone it increases at a constant value but if you are thinking about or if you are looking at a file for the first 16 millimeter it will increase and after that it goes straight there will be no increase in the taper so you can see here yes you can see here that you can compare the gutta percha cone and the file outline so the gutta percha cone you can see here up to this level 
there is increase both in the file outline and also in the gutta percha after that for a file it goes straight and for a gutta percha again it keep increasing so what's the what happens is whenever you place a gutta percha cone it have a size the coronal size which is wider or bigger but the files are quite narrower at the uh, coronal part so what you have to do is we have to choose a better cone that's why we have to always make sure selecting the master cone and also you all know that there are different types of gutta percha cones are available in the market you may wonder that why some cones are quite expensive and some cones are quite affordable aren't they all the the same size or same dimensions and why some cones are expensive yes in case of the expensive cones it will maintain the same taper as that of the file so whenever you are getting frequently this problem where the master cones are not reaching to the full length but the files are reaching to the full length always keep it in mind two things you can do one you can change the master cone and you can go for a better cone which have the same taper or the variations in the taper similar to that of the file or you can do more epic coronal enlargement for example you can use if you are following a uh, pro, uh, pro taper system or progressive taper system or variable taper system you can use sx to enlarge the orifice little more wider or you can use any 12 percentage files which are shorter versions of orifice openers in order to open up the orifice a little more so that the file will reach till the working length so that problem can be solved okay so now we have come to the same hypothetical question that which i asked so now you will be very correct in choosing which one among this is the mistake. I would say that it is number three because we can say that there are a lot of lateral spaces in both of the sides. So if this is there, it is going to be a big failure. Now you may ask what about the extension of the gutta percha or it may be quite short of the apical extension or in those uh, the root canal treatment is going to fail it may be maybe but the number three 100 percentage it is going to fail although in a radiograph it gives an impression that is very very correct you may wonder that i have done a wonderful obturation still why the patient is having pain this may be the one of the reason so concentrate more on the master cone selection and if you are doing this master cone selection perfectly your root canal treatments will be better and all the best for doing a wonderful root canal treatment choose the proper master cone and do a good treatment i will make more videos stay tuned thank you for watching have a nice day